Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Mythic Ivanova who is going to be the character, the exclusive character for the Easter event if it wasn't obvious enough just by looking at her on the right hand side and the left hand side she is the Easter, Easter event character, she has got those bunny ears as we can see on the right hand side the rest of it I'm not really sure about, um, it's like traditional get up potentially is it is it where for the apocalypse? I don't know. Maybe it's just style. I, I I don't really know. But the knives get up. This is awesome. I really like the look here. There's no like special animation when it comes to this, but you know, in terms of the stance, this looks really really cool. I like this a lot. On the left hand sides, we see you know the bunnies in there as well. I I, I wasn't sure what um, trait this character was going to be because she's got a couple of weapons. She's got like a a pistol in on her leg. And then she's holding a grenade, but I, I kind of figured she was going to be fast just from seeing the art because of that dagger. And she is indeed a fast character. We'll check out her stats at a tier 5, maxed out, level 600 gold mythic. She has 13,866 attack, 13,458 defense and 13,458 HP. She is of course that fast character. She's considered a damage dealer and she's got quite balanced stats to be fair. Um, she is a mythic character, of course, and she is part of the Rebels, and I'm not sure. I don't think that we've seen any Rebels as an Allegiance, so it does look like we're getting quite a lot of different Allegiances pop into the game. So we'll go across to look at her Adrenaline Rush, and it is called Pound of Flesh. It's a 66 AP cost rush, deal an attack of 350% damage to two targets each. This character gets 50% of their max AP. So this basically, I think, means that she's going to attack two targets for 350%. The wording has is kind of weird, where it's to two targets each rather than deal and a deal two. I don't know, deal 350% damage to two targets would have been quite more, quite simpler. I think that the reason they're changing the wording on some of this is because these rushes are quite limited, and if it just says deal 350% damage to two targets. It's going to make it look like the rush does nothing. And I think, I'm think i pretty sure that's what it's going to do. It's not going to do two separate attacks. I mean, I'm not sure actually. It could do two separate 350% damage attacks. We'll have to check this out. It's definitely not going to be like Sandy's where it's two hits of to two targets each. So she's not going to be doing up to four. I think the most we're going to see is just two. But the AP on top obviously is great. It does mean once a command comes around... She'll be able to be command rushed after the turn she naturally rushes. So being a fast character, she could potentially hold an AP weapon. You could have other AP characters in the team where she could naturally rush turn two. And then she could be command rushed turn three as well. So she could be rushing twice in the first two turns potentially, which is actually going to be pretty good. But let's test out how that first half of the rush actually works. Okay, so we are on the rush turn for Ivanova here. And we are just going to rush... Glenn up top and we're going to see what happens. My guess is what's going to happen is she's just going to do two separate attacks. So attack one target, then a second target. We'll see if that's the case. So here comes the rush. She attacks Glenn, takes him out, does a reasonable amount of damage. And yeah, so it's going to be attacking one target, then another target. But she seemed to gain a much more AP than she should have there. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe that's to do with her passives. There is a potential for her to get extra AP. We'll have to look into that. But she basically has nearly got a natural rush again. So while that rush is nowhere near as powerful as someone like Sandy's, if there is passives involved to get her that AP, extra AP boost, that could be extremely interesting. Especially if you've got other characters. For instance, I've got Maggie here. If I rush with Maggie, I've got a natural rush on over and over again, if I had a command, like if Holly was a command, I could have preemptively commanded Ivanova before doing Maggie's, and I could have just rushed her twice in the same turn. That is interesting. So we're going to check out those passives in a moment, but the rush looks pretty okay. Um, it's just two separate attacks. Kind of reminds me of S-Class James in, in that case, but there are slightly better weapon options for Ivanova versus James. In terms of damage output, she, if you have the double attack weapon, it is a hard weapon to come by. It was pretty much only in the promo wheel, 
both of those two attacks should be able to double attack. So there is high potential for a big damage output there. If we look at the upgrade requirements, at tier 2 she gets an extra 100% damage, which is obviously nice. But she will be required to get to tier 5 to get the extra 25% AP when doing her rush. And that could make quite a big difference to her power levels. If you were like seeing that AP and seeing that's where a lot of her power is there. The, the chance to rush really quickly again. 25% AP is still okay. And there are probably manipulators in here, you know, with those um, passives. But we'll have to take a look at those. But it is worth noting, you have to get two of her to get her to tier 5 to get that extra 25% AP up. But you don't have to use any upgrades or trainers to get the best out of her rush. But now we'll look at her signature move. And it is called Murderous Intent. It has got an initial cooldown of turn 2. Cooldown of 3. No reviews is 999. Attack an enemy for 200% damage. This character gets 20% attack up and 20 crit for three turns. This is actually really, really powerful because it is a turn two. It's kind of just normal. So you'd be doing a basic attack, turn two, signature move, and then rush turn three. That's the kind of normal sequence that you're going to see on a lot of characters. Only a few, a few characters are going to sort of break that sequence with like turn one, signature moves now and again. But 200% damage on a signature move is basically just her doing two attacks. You're getting basically two attacks worth of damage out of this. It can crit. Again, double attack weapon could double attack, that sort of thing. But the buff on top is really nice because that's going to amplify the rush the next turn. So I like this actually quite a lot. 200% damage is actually really, really good. I think the highest I've seen before this is like 150%. I, I have seen some that do like damage to everybody, for instance Abraham, but his isn't a turn 2, so this is very powerful for a turn 2 signature move. Okay, so we are on turn 2, and I did pile up the attacks on Mythic Glen here, as you can see, and I'm just going to just do it. Let's see what happens. It should do quite a lot of damage, it does, and we get, we get a bit of extra damage coming in, but I think we all know why. But you can see that her rush... Now potentially is going to get boosted by that 20% attack, 20 crit. Those two separate attacks can crit themselves. And obviously attack boost is just going to mean the targeted and any extra damage on top would be amplified. So I think this signature move is actually pretty good. 200% is a lot of damage like I was talking about. But where it's going to be really important to have a lot of damage extra than normal is going to be on defense. If you were to use her on defense, she's got quite balanced stats. So my guess is that there is an intent there to make her potentially usable on either team. And 200% when she's on a defense team being fully buffed out defensively, defense and HP stats, for instance, is going to make a big difference in terms of the damage output she's going to do versus like a 100% basic attack hit. This character getting 20% attack and crit on a defense team again would work really well. On an attack team, it's obviously going to be good because the amount of damage output she's going to have, she's going to have much higher attack stats. So that 200% is going to be really, really good. And then obviously it's going to boost that rush. So I don't really see a downside to this, honestly, except for the obvious what a normal basic attack would bring to the table where she could potentially get stunned by doing this. But I think everyone knows what's going on there. If we look at the upgrades, when it gets to, to three you get the minus one cooldown but that the initial cooldown was going to be turn two but it looks at things it doesn't actually seemingly do any damage until it gets to, to tier four so that's uh that's interesting um but to do the 200 damage you do need to get to, to tier five so you have to get it to max tier and you have to actually upgrade that 20 times to get that to 200%, but that actually could be worth doing, especially if you're using her on a defense team. But on an attack team, you can see the sort of damage output that it has is, is actually like a little mini rush, so it's actually well worth doing. Now we'll check out Ivanova's mythic abilities, the passives for the character. She is a damage dealer, so she gets agility. This is going to work with basic attacks. This is going to work with her rush. This is going to work with her signature move. Every single you know one of these three things is a basic attack or an enhanced basic attack. When it comes to a rush, it's two separate enhanced basic attacks. So that is very, very nice. Critical reception, she gets a 20% crit damage multiplier. Again, that's gonna work with all three. This is quite similar to Sandy so far, but then we go off-road. And uh, this is where she was gaining the AP from before. Whenever an enemy dies, this character gets 15 AP. This is actually really, really interesting because she's getting 50% AP potentially off of that rush you saw if she takes down two she'll get 15 ap for each character she takes down and then obviously there could be some extra damage that she does on top because of other parts of her kit 
where if she just gets an extra bit and then you could command her that turn again to just rush a second time the last one is called rushing a russian when targeted by an enemy adrenaline rush 30 percent chance this character gets 100 percent halo for one turn if you guys have seen dr stevens on the conquest maps you'll know how good halo is and this is me like saying again on a defense team that could actually be really interesting but we'll just quickly check out how both parts of those mythic abilities work both written in blood and rushing a russian okay so i'm going to show you how the ap game side of things works with uh her passives she does have a 20 percent weapon to sell so she automatically gets 15 ap if i do a basic attack i will take out one of these characters for sure she should gain ap there we go it did take a little bit of time i was like wait oh, hold up a second but she did gain some ap we'll do another attack is it just 15 ap per go there we go so you can see how it works if you were to have tyrese in here take out multiple characters again there we go if there's like one character left over you could potentially get that first turn natural rush with only having a 20 percent weapon to self she would need some sort of ap gain from elsewhere because obviously if she's getting 15 ap per takedown the only way she could get a full rush is if everyone was taken down and then she wouldn't need to rush so it's one of them okay so now we're going to test out the halo side of things on her passives she has to be targeted by a rush for it to proc we are going to target her we've got two rushes ready hopefully it actually procs it with one of these two rushes we're going to rush with erica first she has already got a 10 percent defense buff and then as you can see she now has a hundred percent halo for one turn this does mean if she's taken out this turn with anyone else's follow-ups she will obviously be able to self-revive on the next turn so i'm just going to try and finish her off there we go we'll defend with the next two characters and you'll see what happens with halo if you've seen it in conquest is the character will just get picked straight back up and it'll be like a self-revive and i think this has the chance to proc again i'm not going to try and make it proc twice in a row at 30 percent chance it's gonna be very hard but we'll see we could get lucky does it proc again i it hasn't proc again just from this test but potentially it should just be able to proc again i don't think it, there's anything where it was it isn't like once per fight it just says 30 percent chance from when targeted by a rush so so there is potential for her to just have it happen every time she gets rushed so yeah both of those specials effectively i want to put air quotes specials because the other one's a bit more basic you've got one for the just the fact that she's a damage dealer the other one just it seems to be just thrown in on characters that can do multi-hit rushes but the other ones are more specific to the character themselves a lot of the time and they look really good written in blood and rushing a russian look really good and if you look at the upgrades required you only need to get them to tier four to get everything you know maxed out and it is less upgrades to get written in blood and rushing a russian you know fully upgraded as well a lot of the time it's 20 upgrades these two are going to be 15 so a little less in terms of the military supplies and stuff that you actually have to invest in this character i don't necessarily think she needs to have her passes upgraded at all to be quite powerful but you're going to get obviously boosts agility is going to be good for all parts of her kit damage wise you know everything is going to take from agility i upgraded agility on my sandy for instance because it's just very beneficial for a character that has a multi-hit rush a signature move that does damage and obviously does basic attack damage as well so critical damage multiplies the same deal the two other two they obviously it, it kind of depends where you want to ideally use her if you really want to use her on attack i would say written in blood is, is kind of your priority and then if you want to, to use her on defense rushing a russian is is again definitely a priority just just basically so she has a chance of that to happen however i think it's worth noting that when she does get picked up from halo she will never be able to rush just based on you know the changes that have been made to how revived characters don't ever revive with max ap so she will be able to do her signature move and she will potentially be able to heal herself you know fast healing weapon on herself or on other characters could basically bring her up to max hp but she's not going to be able to rush instantly so it's not going to be amazing like it could have potentially been if the revive change didn't come in halo would have been absolutely devastating now she has got one more thing to look at but we aren't going to break this down with some gameplay because you guys saw it actually happening every time she was hitting a hit on those rushes 
on the signature move, basic attacks. She has the chance to do collateral damage too. You saw it happening in the test before where she was just doing splash damage. So that's effectively what it's doing, splash damage. When this character performs a critical attack on an enemy, they will deal splash damage, which is a 100% damage attack, to up to three adjacent enemies. So she can potentially hit four characters on a basic attack. The adjacent enemies do not gain AP from this damage. The, the last bit there was added, I believe, right at the beginning of the S-Class era with the James edition. And this is actually really, really good because she's a fast character as well. She can have, you know, Critical Expert, which is a guaranteed crit. And that means she'll every time hit a collat, every single time. And Critical Expert will help with her basic attacks, her rush and her signature move. So I think that's probably the best way to go with this character. Hitting collaterals every turn, you know, every single thing you do offensively is going to be... A crit, a crit at that point um that is really good i like that on a defense team i don't know it's up to you whether if you i mean crits are going to be very powerful you're going to amplify the damage quite immensely she will focus a lot of the time tough characters you know characters like andrea and princess so there is the potential for her to take someone out especially turn two that 200 percent signature move guaranteed crit would be really nice but who, I mean, maybe there is someone out there who's made an impenetrable defense crit expert weapon because that's kind of what I think she would need if you, if you did want to utilize it on a defense team. Now, lastly, she does have an attached weapon, of course, is Ivanova's Violent Bunny Handle Knife. And it, I, I didn't actually notice that, but if you look on the art on the left-hand side, you can sort of see there's this weird bunny head poking out at the top of the... At the top of the knife that is uh that is interesting indeed and i guess you might get like the upgrade on the handle and stuff as you upgrade this weapon but we'll look at the stats it has got 25 percent attack a medium bonus to ap when attacking bonus crit 45 crit when attacking enemies of more than 50 percent hp obviously the base stats are never seemingly good or at least very very rarely good on these uh, mythic characters it is a five star weapon right now i had to five star it to put a weapon in her hands myself it is a base four star weapon but you're just basically getting the visuals and visually the knives do look great i think that is probably one of the coolest things about ivanova but we've already talked about some weapon options crit expert definitely would be a cool way to go especially on an attack team you're gonna be hitting crits all the time so that is Mythic Ivanova, and I think she is actually pretty good, but I think you're going to have to have a really nice weapon to really get the best out of her. There is potential maybe in the future that a weapon just comes into the game that can make Ivanova stronger as well, um, or you could maybe potentially get that. I think it's a Kukri, I'm not sure, um, but it potentially one of the best weapons that Ivanova can hold, especially if you put Crit Expert on, on there as well. I'm not actually sure what the, the natural force slot was on that weapon, but I know it was definitely a, an advanced uh, double attack. So it's doing the extra damage and the potential to get crit there. And like I said, I think Ivanova is pretty good. She is good for the very first event character as well. I think this is nice. But do give me your thoughts otherwise on Mythic Ivanova in the comments down below. What do you think of her as a, of her as a character? Are you happy that they've done like a, a nice Mythic character for the Easter event? That is uh, going to be the end of my video. If you did enjoy this video or find it informative, please hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, please think about joining the other 13,500 nearly subscribers that I've got. We welcome everybody. But that is the end of this one, guys. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.